Now, we're about to move on to the next topic, which is going to be the greatest playoff risers ever. Now, as of lately, we've seen some great risers in Jamal Murray on the West, Jimmy Butler on the East. Even back in the day, we've had a lot of playoff risers that didn't really have the craziest regular season. But when it comes to playoff time, they're that dude. So, again... We're going to start. Actually, we're going to switch it up this time. I'm going to throw my guy Garrett up there first, only because I know he's an NBA historian, and I think he might he might pull a name out hey, that hey, some hey. of us might not I'm expect. I'm the sports historian here. I'm the sports historian here. I'll try to my get bad, no. facts. He is. Um, so, wait. Okay, yeah. So, let me also preface that – this is about, at least for me, the way I took this is the greatest playoff risers, as in what you did in the regular season compared to what you did in the playoffs um, and just how much you elevate your game. Now, some things could incorporate context um, a little more than others, but this this is kind of a tough one. So how do we want to do this stuff? You want me like to just list my number five and then everyone does five, everyone does four, three, two, one, or? Oh, I don't have five. I thought we were just yeah, doing would, one. I thought, oh, I'm not oh, going to lie. <laughs> I thought we had a list, and then we were just picking one from the list. Oh, shoot. My bad. I my just bad. chose – I personally, I just chose one guy. Me too, yeah. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. Obviously, we can't find the greatest, greatest because it's it's subjective. But okay. I, I guess I would say your number one playoff riser, or, or if you want to go another direction, one of your favorite guys to watch in the playoffs that was a riser. That that makes it a little bit better because I was probably gonna throw out a few names near the end that you guys would have been questioning, but um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, it's I'm gonna be so based. I guess with this answer, it's gonna be so obvious. But I gotta go with the greatest player of all time, and that is LeBron Michael James. Jordan. And that is Michael Jordan. Um, when when you're talking about MJ and the the ultimate scorer in the playoffs, the guy led the scoring or he led the league in scoring in the playoffs like eleven times. I mean, that, that's just absurd. And the times he that's didn't, crazy. he still was averaging like 31, 32, 36. My goodness. Okay. And at the same time, too, like the reason I had to put him like as my primary one is when you think back to every NBA legend, you can always think back about something. You know, like when we think of LeBron, we can think of the 2011 finals. When we think about Kobe, some people bring out the 2004 finals. We think about Tim Duncan. We think of the 2011 first round against the Grizzlies. It's like you got to incorporate I think the whole big picture. You got to add in everything. Now when you're talking about Michael Jordan and like what series he played bad in, the worst series you could probably find would be 1995 when he came back against the uh, Orlando Magic off baseball. And he still put up 31 a game, and even oh, Shaq yeah, himself has actually, and and even even Shaq himself has said that he was still the best player in the world in that series at that point in time. I'm not holding that against him. That was an insane series, if you ask me. He still played well. Now there were some little things like yeah, at the end of game one, he got stripped by Nick Anderson, and I know that's always going to be out there and stuff like that. And there's like one in one of the games, he had like one air ball in the fourth quarter that always gets played. But overall, if you ask me, my, still Michael Jordan, there is no series that you can look at and be like, oh yeah, like he he was just bad in that series. The same way we look at every other player today. You know, like the the worst scoring series he had, he averaged 26 and a half points a game. Think about that. 26 and a half points a game was his ultimate. It was his lowest point, right? Every single player he played in the playoffs, he outscored ever in history, in playoff history. That That's crazy. And you think about it, it's like, oh, well, if he'd only played 30, 40 games, this guy's played like 180 games basically in the playoffs. That's up there with one of the most ever. When you think about the finals, he only elevated his game even more. Has the highest scoring average for a single final series ever. And he had over 40 points per game five times in the playoffs. I think it's only been done eight Damn. times. Eight times in playoff series, they someone has averaged 40 points a game. Michael Jordan has five of them. Five. Okay. So that's well. Wow. That's well. Wow. Yeah, and it's like he almost persuaded me. And it's not like he only <laughs> yeah. j just did it like in scoring either. He still, I believe, I don't know if actually it was changed in the last two years, but I know up to up to last year, guess who had the record for the most assists per game in a final series? 
for a non-point guard? Michael Jordan. Really? Michael Jordan, the guy who only scores, he's a ball hog, he doesn't pass. And at the same time, he averaged like seven assists a game in like 10 other playoff series. This guy always elevated his game. He is the ultimate winner. He's the ultimate competitor and probably not just basketball, but in all sports. Like when you think of the greatest athletes ever, Michael Jordan's name is probably the first one you think of or one of the first ones you ever think of. And for that reason alone, I know he has high standards in the regular season to compare it with because it's like he has like five MVPs. He was all NBA first team a lot of times, too. But when you think about you're still elevating your game in the playoffs to that degree, I have to put him number one. And and there were a few other guys I thought about, too, but nothing compares to Mike. So give me Michael Jordan. All right, Garrett, I hear you. And uh, before I respond and give my opinion, um, that's such an American take. You said <laughs> Michael Jordan is the ultimate winner and the probably one of the, the – well, he is one of the first names you think of, but that's that's an American take. And I'm not going to push back on it too hard because this is a basketball show and that's not a basketball uh, opinion that I was going to share out. But, uh, yeah, so with mine, I will – Hey, respect, on, respect Brian. Okay, respect Brian Kiara. Uh, enough about Jor- enough Not about Jor Gamble. Enough about Jor Gamble. Um, this player might come out of left field, and it might take a little bit of convincing for me to uh, actually persuade you guys. But I mean, we just saw championship run, Finals MVP. Give me Nikola Jokic now. Nikola Jokic, to this point in his career, has been stellar in the playoffs. You think about one of the few players whose efficiency goes up in the playoffs. He was averaging something ridiculous, uh, very, very close to 50, 40, 90 in this playoffs. I think it was close to like 55, 40, 90 or something like that. So, yeah, Jokic, we all, we all know that Jokic is an efficiency monster in the regular season. For him to carry that during the, the postseason – where the defense is tighter and you're not going to get as many open looks as you would compared to the regular season. Supremely impressive. And I want to also bring this up. During this playoff run, he dropped 43 points in a loss, 53 points in a loss, and 41 points in a loss. That was three different series he did that, three different games, all of them in the losses. Obviously, I wouldn't put the losses on him, and a loss is a loss, so you're not going to give you're not going to get brownie points for losing. But like that's a it ain't it ain't very much else you can uh, ask for your star player to give you 40 points and 50 points and you still end up losing. Another thing I want to bring up, <clears throat> Jokic has uh, three games in the playoffs where he scored uh, within 40 to 49 points. He has one 50 point game. Obviously, we just saw that this season. He has 22 games where he scored from 30 to 39 points. Now, if you add that up, 22 plus 3, 25, 26, if you add the 50-point game, he's started 68 playoff games, and he has 26, did I, yeah, 26, where he scored at least 30 or more. That's a high pedigree. You also want to look at he's a double-double machine in the playoffs because he's already a great rebounder. That doesn't really go away during the playoffs. He has 50 total uh, playoff double doubles again in 68 starts. And if you want to go even further, because we know Jokic is a great assist man, we know he's a, a elite passer. He has 16 triple doubles in 68 starts. I know that his playoff success has only come recently. You know, with him only having uh, the the one ring and two conference finals trips. But Jokic is a stellar playoff performer, and I think he kind of gets overlooked. Um, by playing with Jamal Murray, which is a crazy thing to say because we think of Jamal Murray as like one of the best playoff risers today, and he absolutely is. He's I'm, I'm not taking that away from him. But when you look at Jokic and some of the things that he was doing when Jamal Murray was hurt, when Michael Porter Jr. was hurt, go go rewatch that um rewatch that Warrior series. He was great during that Warrior series. A lot of people try to say, oh, Draymond, you know, he 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 did his thing defensively. He really didn't. He really didn't. Uh, another series that I can point to, the Trailblazer series, where I think didn't Dane drop 55 in a loss or something like that? And mm-hmm. that series, he was great. So I can point to multiple series where Nikola Jokic has just been stellar. Um, so, yeah, he's my pick for that. He's my pick for 
one of the best playoff risers of all time. And I think we're going to see a lot, a lot more of Jokic rising in the playoffs very, very soon. So, so when it comes to playoff risers, I was thinking more players that I was alive to watch and witness, and I enjoyed like playing and saw the greatness with Michael Jordan. Like Garrett, you made an absolutely great point, and I would argue that he probably is the greatest playoff riser of all time. But I was not alive for a lot of this. I enjoyed watching the man behind Jay give me Kobe Bean Bryant for the best playoff riser in my lifetime. I like Kobe a lot. Personally, I feel like everybody here, I, I don't think there's a single, there's not very many people on this planet that do not have Kobe Bryant as one of their favorite players of all time. So I understand that doesn't have a lot to do with playoff success, but a lot of the times public reputation and enjoyment of a player comes through the playoffs. And I'll explain to you exactly why just his last playoff series, he or last playoff performance, he averaged 30 points a game, which is crazy. 2011, 2012, he averaged 30 again in 2009, 2010, averaged 30 again in 08, 09, averaged 30 again in 07, 08. He had a 40 piece too in his last mm -hmm. ever playoff game, which is yes. the second most ever in a last game, only behind Michael Jordan's 45 in game six and 98 finals. But continue. Yes. Gee, maybe he um, was a sports historian. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> I don't know. But as I was saying, he had that 30, he had 30 average in 07 08. He averaged 33 in 06 to 07. He averaged 30 in 2000, 2001. He averaged 32 in 02 to 03. I mean, it's a guy like when you compare this to maybe like Michael Jeffrey Jorfrod stats, like it's not nah, quite the same, stop. but like, <laughs> In my experience from my lifetime watching basketball and my enjoyment, Kobe Bryant was always a riser, was always the top uh, talking point on the media, was always in the newspapers. Everybody was talking about Michael Jeffrey Jorfrod being worse than Kobe. Okay. No, but I, in reality, I think Kobe Bryant is the top playoff performer, at least in my lifetime. No, Justin, you are actually right. That was a conversation for some time. I. I, I was old enough to remember there were conversations where people were putting Kobe above Jordan and stuff. There was, there was a time. It was yeah, a short-lived time. There, there was, was a time. There there's was, a whole song on it too. Like there's yeah. like the Co the Kobe Jordan song. If you guys have ever heard that, and that's a it's a solid listen. It's pretty good. There, yeah, there was a time Kobe and uh, like play LeBron. I I just can't, I can't push that narrative today. But like, hey, there was a time where it was like, hey, is Kobe like that? And Kobe was like that. He just wasn't like that. You know what I'm saying? But that time I was that second like that. Mean <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't. He wasn't like Jordan. He was not the same as Jordan. Shit. <laughs> he was the Pretty carbon damn. copy. What are we talking about? Wait. He was <laughs> not he was not as good as Jordan is what I'm saying. I will I say mean, that right now. But I'll, I'll put it to you like this. I'll put it to you like this. Out of any other player in history, Kobe is the one and only guy that I am willing to yeah, that I would be willing to bet on against Jordan if he faced Jordan in the finals. The that one and only guy. That's, that's fine. He's the cl he's the closest comp, but I yeah. I still wouldn't say he's like on that. You know, yeah, I level. agree. Like that's the thing. Hey, you're preaching to a guy that loves Kobe Bryant over here. I love Kobe, but it don't sound like it. But <laughs> your turn, Devin. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm a true I'm, not, I'm a I'm true Kobe good. lover, and I'm gonna tell you now. Well, you're a Lakers fan, so you're a Lakers Bro, took fan. Took his key holder abilities. He's like Devin's turn. But I, I <laughs> what I will tell you, what I, what I will tell you is, I'm not a Lakers fan. I enjoy watching Kobe play, but I'm gonna be objective here and say that he was not the level that Michael Jordan was. But Kobe Bryant, for a time period, for sure, was people were talking about it. I thought it was. I thought it, it just, was fair for a time. It just kills me because you started off this argument with I've never seen Jordan play, so I can't say Jordan. And then you go, no, but and Jordan's kinda, better that like that. True, yeah. that's thing. the no, part no, no. that's like, it doesn't. No, no, no. I, I think, I think Jordan's better, but I'm not going to put Jordan on that list 
because I never got to watch him personally with my eyes. So then how is he better because you've never that, never mind. Garrett kind of convinced me. Yeah, I mean I, I, <laughs> like, I see Garrett... I see what Steph's saying. Like, I mean, first of all, Jelson, we, we we both know Jordan's the correct answer here. But I mean, I see what Steph is saying. Like it, it <laughs> yeah, did but... kind of contradict itself. <laughs> okay, true. Okay. I what I would tell you is what I'm trying to say is Michael Jordan was probably the greatest playoff uh, riser, but in my lifetime. Okay. Kobe That's was fair. the best. Fair enough. Fair. fair. Devin, my brother, why do I feel like I'm going to get a Raptor? You are. You it are. Not be I knew it. Oh, it's Kyle <laughs> Lowry. It's Kyle Lowry. <laughs> it's Kyle Lowry. I'm, Come on now. That man had a goose egg and too many single digit stat lines to be putting him as the greatest playoff <laughs> riser. Greatest got, playoff holder for actually... like four years? Maybe. But he did finally figure it out and he did get his ring. But. This is definitely not Kyle Lowry. It is another K, though. Another KL. It is Kawhi Leonard. Let's go. I've yes. seen it right in front of my eyes, and it's it's just too hard to ignore, and he's just done it time and time again. And he did it before he was even a star. He did it when he was just a role player in San Antonio, and he rises defense to the occasion. His offensive numbers would be better even still as a role player. He could rise to the occasion and win a finals MVP when he still wasn't the main guy in the Spurs before he was that true superstar that we all know him to be now. He was he just wasn't that guy back then, but he came out in the postseason and did what he needed to do. And he, he's just been at that type of level his entire career now. He's always been someone who's rose to the occasion. He's got a higher field goal percentage and higher three-point percentage during the postseason than he does during the regular season for his career. And it's not, even though I don't agree with it, there's a reason why people said that he carried this Raptors team to a ring for stretches of it. I don't agree with a lot of that, especially throughout the back half of that run, but there's a reason why people said it. And that's because Kawhi was so damn good time and time again. And even though he's had his injury concerns with the Clippers, that hasn't stopped in, in LA. He's continued to just rise to the occasion in LA He's got a 28 point per game, a 30 point per game, and a 34.5 point per game postseason run, given that last one was a two game stint. But point being is Kawhi shows up during the postseason. He continues to produce. He continues to be more efficient. And especially now at this point in time in his career, his defense goes from being good to very good, if not elite, compared to where it is in the regular season. So he's done it from day one to where he is now as a superstar. And that's what makes it so impressive. Even as a guy who didn't enter the league as a star, someone who had to make a lot of improvements throughout his career to get to where he is now and took a lot of time to get to the point where he was an all-star. I mean, it was year five until he made his first all-star appearance. He's just shown from day one, from being a role player in San Antonio to winning the chip in San Antonio to winning the chip in Toronto and now trying his best despite the injuries in LA to try and get them a chip. And he just continues to time and time again, show up on both ends of the floor, continue to produce and continue to be more efficient. I'm so glad you said Kawhi Devin, because that was who I had number two on my list. Cause like I said, I originally made five. He was the guy I had right below Jordan, because when you think about Kawhi, especially since he's been like a star level player and even before, like, He's always shown up like the only time you could use against him is that game seven in the bubble when really in the first half too, he was still pretty good. Even if he played just as good in the second half, had a quality game, they probably weren't going to win that game. It just has been the narrative at, up to that point. Like the whole Clippers team like had so many issues at that point in time. They, it just wasn't going to happen. But when you think about 2021 and he took the Luca assignment, especially when they were down 2-0 twice, and he brought them back. I know he didn't finish the last series, but he still got them back to two two in both of those. And like I said, took the Luca assignment when he was guarded. When he was guarding Luca, Luca struggled. Like people don't want to mention that. Like in those shot attempts, he most definitely did struggle. And you wouldn't think that because like, bro, Luca's averaging like thirty, like almost a thirty point triple double. But go check like what Kawhi did to him when he was defending him, and he most definitely made him struggle. People also never want to talk about how in the last three games of the twenty fourteen finals. Hey, man, I know I am a, a LeBron hater, as I am labeled, but in the last three games of that finals, objectively, Kawhi Leonard was better than LeBron James, and that is just facts. Like, you can, you can go check that back however you want to. It was just the reality of it. 2017, he was insane. Now, he had that injury, and really, injuries are the only thing that's been stopping him. 
I think 2019, that might be the one of the best runs in the last decade. And I kind of said that a little bit last stream. And then even this year, again, he proved even in sh short notice that come playoff time, he's a completely different breed. So I, I, I completely agree with you. I think maybe in terms of, um, I don't know, like he's the only person I think you could have argued maybe at least in my opinion with Michael Jordan for the number one spot, just because of in the regular season, he doesn't care so much about the accolades and whatnot, whatever. He only had like one year where he was in like a real MVP discussion in like 2016, like that in even then, like that was the unanimous MVP year. So he wasn't going to win it, but like he was the runner up that year. Um, but other than that, like, you know, in the regular season, he's kind of just been like, it's whatever come playoff time though. Like he turned to new, in my opinion, still when he's healthy, the best player in the world, like that, that's just how good he turns in, in the playoffs. And I think if, if he's healthy again, next year in the playoffs, we'll probably see the same thing. The only question is like the, if part of it, but yeah, Kawhi, Kawhi is definitely an elite uh, playoff riser who unlike a lot of legends, also boosts his efficiency in the playoffs too. A lot of them, they'll take more shots, but their efficiency might go down a little. Kawhi, he'll take more shots. His efficiency definitely goes up on all levels, which is impressive. See, uh, I, I like that take. Definitely Kawhi. Um, speaking of efficiency, I'm going to call out the most efficient player, damn near in NBA history when it comes to the playoffs, and that's Lego, LeBron James, obviously. And I'm not going to lie. It was really the 2018 playoffs is what did it for me. I'm not going to lie. 2018 James LeBron James, I've never seen a better basketball player in my life. 2018 LeBron James LeBron. dominated every single time he stepped in, stepped on that basketball court. From that seven-game series with the Pacers in the first round, that was absolutely amazing. The way he finished that out. Then in, uh, in, the, uh, in game seven with the Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals, phenomenal I'm, I'm surprised the boston celtics that young squad had enough firepower for lebron james despite having uh uh george hill on his team uh old ass kyle corver jr smith and these guys but then that then making it get, making it to the finals and that first game game one of that nba finals absolutely insane the 50 point triple double unfortunately jr smith did the jr smith thing but I think if they won that game, that series may have turned out a, a bit different. Stop it, because stop it. Warriors in five. Stop. Because twenty eight. That, that's LeBron all it would have been, if anything. Because it would have been a repeat LeBron of the two, 2001 finals. It would have been just a repeat when Allen Iverson won game one for the Sixers and then they got mopped the next four games. LeBron James is not Allen Iverson. But with that being said, I've never it seen might be worse, another player come up, come up big <laughs> in the clutch. Then LeBron James, I'm not going to lie, you could go to 2016, that big block on Iguodala. I mean, making play after play to solidify the 3-1 comeback, I don't know how anyone else could choose someone that's not LeBron James. Shout out to LeBron, man. <laughs> man. Kyrie made the clutch play in that game, let's be real. <laughs> Like oh wow. as as um, much as people no here's here's, here's the eating. reality of it though here's the LeBron reality of it. in action a everyone says that LeBron got that block and oh it changed the momentum it did not change the momentum because right after that play LeBron came back took a horrible shot then a timeout was called all the momentum was killed but then it, the game resumed and Kyrie Irving hit the clutch shot that essentially won them the championship. So yeah, and you no, can say no, whatever what you want about LeBron, that block. LeBron doesn't block the shot. Now what are we saying? Okay, because like well, three, it doesn't. The three still then, needs to go in, but like Garrett, in the last yeah. four minutes, the Warriors didn't score. It was a it yeah. was a combination of bad shots and the LeBron block, which saved two points, which I believe would have put them up because I think they were tied at that point. And There's then, also no guarantee that they even would have went in because he was running fast. You saw he that, he turned on the layup, he turned on the Jets. In, bro. He that layup is going in. Mm, really? I don't know. That, I don't know. It, it had potential in. to miss because he he turned up the Jets and like he was scared Dude, it, that LeBron was LeBron. coming. Dude, LeBron. But he could have missed even if he didn't no, block no. it. I'm saying. What LeBron I'm saying. Put the fear of God in that man for a reason. I'm gonna yeah. be honest. I'm gonna be honest yeah. with y'all. Without J.R. Smith in that play, that doesn't. It's not a block because jr smith is what nah, caused sure. andre iguodala to come back too. down and go for back sure. up and lebron also ran 94 feet oh no for sure to his ass. no for sure but, but i i just don't agree with the people that say that changed the momentum in the sense where it's like 
okay, that that gave the Cavs momentum because it did not. There's people out there that say that that gave them momentum. Maybe you can make an argument. Him, that definitely it, gave him momentum. momentum. But it, it, it couldn't have because then after that, LeBron took a horrible shot. Then the Warriors came down. I think they missed. And then it was a timeout with less than a minute left in the game or like just over a minute left in the game. It's still tied at 89-89. Kyrie see, hits that shot. That gave see, them momentum. Let me tell you this. More than that. What I would tell you is the block happens. Boom. Automatically, there's momentum going Cleveland. Cleveland, LeBron takes a bad mm. shot. Warriors come down, take a uh, take a bad shot, miss that shot. You don't think momentum shifted right then? It, no, LeBron I don't. Takes I don't, a horrible I don't, shot. Warriors get the ball back. I don't think so. It's still in the Cavs' favor. Yeah, because, because they, they they both, in, in my they opinion, both then there's no momentum. Missed. There's no momentum. Then, no, because in my LeBron opinion. got that block. So let me get this straight. LeBron, LeBron gets that block, and and they're still at 89, 89 until like the last five seconds. The Warriors, the Warriors had the ball, chance to win the championship. The Cavs still had momentum before that point. The Warriors did nothing to kill the momentum after the block. Yeah, but they didn't. The Cavs couldn't establish it. Getting the block doesn't mean anything because you have to put up points to win. All right, bro. No, All no, right, you bro. do. Bro. That's a big He, 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 he could have. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. He could have got. He could have got the block. Nobody could have scored the rest of the regulation. They still have momentum going into overtime. I mean, you can't that's really technically. I mean, <laughs> in my in my opinion, there's either no momentum or af- the momentum shifts after the Cavs take a horrible shot on the next play, that's and it goes back to the works. Warriors because they have the ball. Uh, momentum Real doesn't. Hoopers. Shout out my boy John. Real. So then there's no momentum. Like- <laughs> so then there's no momentum at that point. There just isn't. I don't know, uh, yo, Gary. I feel like you forget about all the fans in the in the crowd, bro. They they're there yeah, too. That, and- that layup goes in. Everybody's cheering. The energy it's electric in there. But they were so, still loud, though, uh, after that point. They were equally as loud after LeBron missed. You, you need to hear the roars of the crowd after LeBron missed that shot right after the block. You need well, to. It was, it was equally the same. Shit, before we turn this sure, into... Sure, but after that, it changed again. Before we turn this into 2018 finals debate, which is a crazy finals two debate, um, <laughs> when you get swept, that's an insane... Anyway, I like that Jay said one of the most clutch players ever. And I might sound crazy with my take because this guy's never won a ring, but he is a playoff riser. And I, exactly I always enjoyed saying. Reggie Miller, yep. one of mm-hmm. the most clutch oh, players of all time. I like, like, he didn't win a ring. I, I get it. Well. And, and I know that is kind of crazy to say when a player doesn't win a ring. But when you look at his body of work, it kind of shocks you that he never won a ring. Not the besides the fact of his play, but he also played guys like Kobe, D Wade, Ray Allen, Vince Carter, and Clyde Drexler in his career in the playoffs, which is it's a crazy list of shooting guards. And that's not even naming the small fours that he played against. But Reggie Miller's ability to create offense for himself without the ball, we were base he was essentially Steph before we got to see Steph. But Steph kind of brought the range back further, whereas Reggie Miller, he did not stop moving without the ball. That's just something he wasn't going to do. But even past that, one thing that I loved about Reggie Miller the most, and again, you mentioned clutch. In elimination games, he averaged 25 points per game on 62% true shooting with only one, a little under two turnovers per game from 1990 to 2002. Uh, that, that's insane, and I'm going to be honest, I think Gary can even attest to this. Reggie Miller was a guy that Bulls fans were, they were pretty scared of for for a little bit, and then obviously Michael Jordan is Michael Jordan, so that mm-hmm. kind of was short-lived. But Reggie Miller is still one of those dudes when the playoff comes. It's unfortunate the teams he's had by his side. I think his best season to where he could have won was the Malice in the Palace year. And, of course, we know what happened with his team there. But he's one of those dudes that when the playoffs comes, you know what to expect from Reggie Miller. So I had him on there. And I think that was the biggest curveball. I'm not going to lie. Steph, yeah. I'm glad you mentioned okay. Reggie Miller because he has one of the most, I say underappreciated now, but it's basically one of the a forgotten gem of – like all time clutch moments when he stepped mm-hmm. back and hit that three, literally catches the ball, steps back because he knows he needs the three points and just laces it. That's that's one of the most uh, underappreciated moments to me, and it's unfortunate that it's basically forgotten the time now. You know, when I was watching 
uh, when I was watching ESPN and they would have the, uh, I forget exactly what they were, but it was like old, uh, old document, not old documentaries, but like documentaries like, that delved into uh, some of the older playoff series. 30 for that 30? That, mm. Not, not, it was, oh. I don't think it was 30 for 30, but, uh, it, it was, it was, some, it might've been 30 for 30, but, um, yeah, that was, that was one of the moments that stuck out in my head. Like, damn, he was really this clutch. He was really that cold. And it just sucks because uh, one of the reasons that I hate just looking strictly at accolades whenever we evaluate players is because it never takes into context. It never takes into situations that actually happen. I I could have a game winner in game five and we lost the series. And now the game winner is it don't it, matter. forgotten because it we, mm-hmm. we didn't make it past the series or ultimately we didn't get the ring. That's why the Derek White's this Warriors year. Warriors yeah. don't, you know, don't get they don't get they burn that they should. A hundred percent. And with the growth of ring culture, it just becomes even more and more, I would say, we we start to see more and more players' moments and some things that we remembered in that time specifically start to get forgotten because a lot of the times conversations are coming down to, well, they didn't win, so who cares, unfortunately. Like, imagine imagine if that Kawhi shot is now just, we don't talk about it because they lost in the finals. That's a insane moment in history something that quite literally has never happened before and we might not even see it happen again until a few years down the line shit it might be Kawhi that does it again because of how clutch he is in the playoffs <laughs> but I, I would have hated to see that moment just be lost and forgotten the time in 10 years because oh the Raptors didn't even win that ring so who cares and it was just a second yeah. series so who cares so yeah and to add to kind of like what both of you guys are saying not only just like the um the moment against the knicks you know what i mean but like the eight points in nine seconds but also like bro he he even had and like you were saying steph like there was a moment in time where it's like maybe we like feared reggie miller part of that too is also like so we only played him in the playoffs once in 98 but that was also like probably of our championship teams like our worst team you know like and Mm -hmm. and that pacers team red reggie miller even said i believe he said in the last dance or he said in something else he said it was either the 95 team or the 98 team was their best team, even though they made the finals in 2000. And I'm, I'm sure you even remember that as a Laker right. fan. Like he said, like that wasn't like their best team. He thought mm-hmm. it was either 95 or 98. And at that point, like he, he even felt like we, we were, we had more talent and you could probably argue they had a more talented team. And then he hit that That's one game winner um, in the series as well. And that kind of gave them a little bit of life. You know what I mean? So there, there was definitely moments where Reggie Miller came up big um and yeah like i was definitely thinking about him too um for like when i came in like i guess with like five of them but also like we got to give credit to to some guys like bill russell first of all i mean winning 11 championships and this guy elevated as a scorer as a rebounder basically on all levels in the playoffs and every time or i wouldn't say every time but a majority of the time he always outplayed the competition in the playoffs especially. You definitely can't forget about that. I think also, like, two other guys I just kind of want to give some recognition to is another Celtic in John Havlicek. I mean, this guy, arguably, if there was a finals MVP in 1968, because the first one was 69 with Jerry West when they lost, this guy would have been the finals MVP, in my opinion, and he eventually won one in, like, uh, 1974. So, and I, I just think personally, like, He's a guy that never got too much love in the regular season, but come playoff time, he was consistently one of the best players, maybe throughout like the 1970s. You could argue that he was like a top five player in the in the league for most of that decade, at least for that time. And another guy I just want to mention, if we're talking about like rising in the playoffs, I know he had teammates that were probably better than him come playoff time, but I think big game James worthy as well. Like definitely. I mean, still. A game seven, like thirty point triple double to win the championship. Crazy. That that's that's freaking insane. And a lot of times too, he would hit clutch shots as well. Mm-hmm. He upped his efficiency. He upped his scoring in the playoffs. So I got to give a, a couple of those guys the nod as well. Like just when we're talking about who elevates their game the most in the playoffs, because regular season, especially those last two between Havlicek and um, um, Worthy. Like, they never got, like, too much love in the regular season that you would think. Like, neither of them were ever, like, a regular season MVP or anything like that. Not, like, really first-team All-NBA nods. Many there is. But come playoff time, like, you could argue that they were probably top five players in the league at some point in time. Um, even for James Worthy, especially in, like, uh, 1988. So, 
I, I just wanted to give them uh, some appreciation as well. Man, stop all that pandering just we got because we got a Lakers fan that's key holder. Man. <laughs> I, get, I, uh, I said two Celtics before that, though. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm just bullshitting. I'm just but, um, this is the most fair, Laker positivity I've heard in so long. Yeah, I love man, it. Hey, if I'm if I'm here for next stream, none of that shit, buddy. But uh, uh, just real quick, I well, I won't be here, so you don't have to worry about that. He doesn't. He doesn't have uh, the the career like games played playoff yet, and he's still very young in his career. But I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Luca. Um, second all time in playoff points per game behind only Michael Jordan, and he's the only other person that is scored. 30 points per game, uh, Michael Jordan, 33, Luca, 32. Uh, I'm not going to call him uh, one of the all-time playoff risers yet, but I think we're starting to see the seeds of, like, a player that can be one of the all-time playoff risers. You look at what he's done, he's faced two very, very good Clippers teams already, and both of them both of them were hard outs, right? I know they lost the one series. They lost both of them, I think. Uh, yeah. Don't quote me on that because I might be wrong. They did. But, uh, yeah, they did. So both hard outs and then made it to the Western Conference Finals, this dispatch of the Suns. And, again, he – listen, it sounds crazy now, but in five – even five years, because I think that Luka is that type of talent to where you put a consistent uh, – a, a competent roster around him and they, he, he can make a finals run. Five, ten years – I think we're going to be talking about Luca as one of the uh, top playoff uh, risers in the league. And shit, after his career is over, we might be talking about as one of the best playoff performers, playoff risers of all time. But that's all I had on that. And one last thing to add into, I'm sorry, I I forgot about this, but we just didn't really talk too much. I know Mo kind of mentioned a little bit, but we didn't talk too much about Jamal Murray, who does have the ultimate scoring jump from the regular season to the playoffs and especially if i'm if i'm putting like in my group of players players that don't have too much regular season recognition come playoff time i mean you even like i think we even talked about it steph a while ago like that you you said like i think jamal murray or you've been saying for a while he's like a top 25 player in the league and especially come playoff time you could even argue he's like better than that just because he always rises to the occasion i didn't give him maybe Mm -hmm. the same recognition just because I think everyone like on my list I had they won multiple titles and they played at least like 10 or so playoff series so he'll be there in short time but um like with my qualifications I guess but um either way like we, we still got to give him recognition as well because hey they don't they don't win the championship without Jokic but they also don't win it without Jamal Murray a hundred percent we all know I'm a Jamal Murray endurer over here Mo for sure because I'm not gonna lie I did rank him I want to say it was top 15 (laughs) before the season last year. I wasn't wilding. I was early. Um, All right, buddy. But with that being said, 